Okay, so good question. Find one reliable source and stick to it. Okay, we just handed out um, lesson eight from one of the books, and that's right there, guys, if you want to look at it on punctuation. Let's just review it. Again, remember, we're giving you different papers so you can create your own little reference books. Um, use a comma after introductory words. Yes, no. So in, in your Q&As, yes, comma, I will. Yes, comma, and I still have students that are not putting commas in there. Just not putting commas on the Q&A. And we talked about when you would have a period if it's yes, the question was, did you go? Yes, I all, yes, um, I always go. You know, we talked about when you would use a period or just a comma. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Okay, so that was one nearby. Um let's keep going. Nearby, UCLA, no periods, no spaces.
scientists. Scientists is. Okay, there's a couple of other scientists. ways of this. Beaming at McLaughlin as if he were a star student. Would there be a comma after scientists? Yes, there is right there. Because it's, it's describing Robert Bjork, one of the world's most respected cognitive scientists. You didn't need all that. UCLA College Professor Robert Bork is beaming at McLaughlin. So just, whenever there's just like so many comments, I just think. Okay. <coughs> uh, so we has logged about 4,000 hours. A couple of students are still writing this up. All your numbers. Make sure you have good number rules. Okay. 4,000, you want to write it out 10 and above, and we've seen rules, it's 9 and above, or 9 and below, or spelled out. The majority of court reporting, I've seen it's 10, 1 through 10 are spelled out. So again, you just find something that's consistent for you. Um, 4,000 hours of practice time since is, why did I circle that? Time, I think, maybe some people might have commented on that question. Oh, time. Here's another one about the S's. See, guys? Scientists is, scientists is, and then some students have times since. So just, I'm saying watch your S's when you have words, because some, you, you miss it on a, on a test. Okay? Time since. 30th hyphen birthday epiphany. 30th hyphen birthday epiphany. Um, and you know about the subscript. Does everybody know how to do a subscript where the 30th would be smaller if you had to do that? And I think I put on one to not do the subscript on this, but do you all know how to do a subscript? Go to any Word document. Go to any Word document. You're talking about a subscript or a superscript? S superscript. So, uh, is it super or sub? It's, I don't know what super it's called. Is up. I, whatever it's called in Word document. Just open up a Word document. H2O, the two would be a, a sub. Good. If you go into your computer and open up a Word document, and at, open up um, your font, your font right there. Subscript? Well, there's two of them, Grant, so let's see which one it is, okay? Well, it's, it's sub means below. Super okay. means above. Okay. Hi. So that will make you like, if you have fourth and you want to write it like that, well, it's defaulted to that little. Yeah. Okay? So if oh. you need to change it, you go to your font and you take it off. We don't. Uh, do that, right? In transcripts. No, yeah. you don't. You we keep don't. them not on your transcripts. No. Eclipse has that option though. Does it? Okay, good. You just so go you, to you you're take on, it off. You do hyper keys. You go to um, N, shift yeah. N, and it gives you an option to pick superscript. Okay. We don't, so we don't want do to take anything word. Because you wouldn't. Yes, ma'am. So in a transcript would you leave it? Superscript. superscript. No, you want to do it so it can be it can be read. Okay. Uh, of course, you might have a boss that might want you to do that. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, I didn't know that. I, you know, I worked recently, and I mean, I've worked for years and years in offices, and what my boss said, "Oh, can you change all these?" I said, "Okay." <laughs> so I was looking to figure out how to do it, and then she showed me, and I thought that's so easy, but you don't use it. You don't. You, you don't use it. On Office 2000 or whatever they say, yeah. mm -hmm. um, it it just you can just. Okay. Yeah, it's one or the other. Yeah, you don't have to go into any of Okay. And that's why we, we were just talking about right here, 30th hyphen birthday, epiphany. And as Lord decided to cap to seven. Why do we have a seven? Why do we need a number seven? It's a measurement. Measurement. Um your numbers are good your numbers are gonna be um your friends, okay? They will be your friends, and, and uh, 
Again, this is that same chapter 4 that we just read, so if you guys want to remind me, I'll, I'll make a copy of this chapter 4. The only reason I can think of it is because it's unit of measurements. Okay? 12 feet. You know, it's, it's... We learned that on the year from the child, remember, the three-year-old, and we everybody wrote T-H-R-E-E. -E. And by age, we saw that age is... Uh, Helen, on that 30th birthday, is is it hyphenated because of the word epiphany after, or is it always hyphenated? Because I didn't, I, I didn't hyphenate. These are all the co combined adjectives. Yeah, it's an adjective. To the epiphany. To the epiphany. Uh -huh. it's, a 30, it's not a 30th epiphany. It's not a birthday epiphany. It's a 30th birthday epiphany. You know what an epiphany is? If not very, very what is it? A realization. Okay. Good. I like that. Good. Which means better than 85%. Okay, this is not the way we do it in court reporting. You would write it out. Because we write out the percents. Remember, in the old days, uh, things were done in carbon and that would be erased. The male American coffee public since April 2010. Common, he has worked his game six days a week. Um, this was a, I think maybe half had the calm here, half didn't. It, it looks like it continues running, but it, for, a, a rule, guys, one of the rules that said if it helps the reader read, period. That's another one. Living off white stock and renting out the house about five years ago. Um, quote, if you know me, comma, comma, inside, quotes, always, always. Periods, inside, quotes, always, always. Okay? He says, self-deprecatingly. What does it mean? If you don't know, look it up. Anytime you have a word, guys, I don't even know myself. No, that when you're deprecating, it means you're you're humble. It's like you're saying, "Oh, I'm not that great." Okay. But okay. Good. So I, all I'm asking is, when you don't have a word, this is an excellent way for you to build up your, your vocabulary. It takes two minutes. Look it up. Okay. Um, so he says, self-deprecatingly, comma, open quote again, lower you. You know, I wear one pair of pants, period, inside, always, close quote. For scientists like York, who heads UCLA's learning and form for getting lab, if you Google that whole thing, it does not have the ampersand? Well, I went to UCLA's website and they had the ampersand. And they have the ampersand, good for you, okay. And, I, and in looking at McLaughlin's studies, it, when they reference him, it doesn't say it, so th that would be the right source to go to. UCLA well, he, there is a lab. Yeah. It's psychology department. And it has um, the ampersand? Cognitive science department, and it's called learning and forgetting mm -hmm. that with the ampersand. Good. Okay, on mine, um, where, where some, if someone misspeaks, how do you handle that? You just... When, no, when I did it, or do you? you did exactly right. Okay. Because when I make errors, remember you're doing this five times in the morning, and, and you will sure. have a little flubber, and I'm like towards the end, I'm thinking, oh, okay. So rather than starting, I will repeat myself. When I correct it, I want you to make it a perfect transcript as best as you can without my flubs. Okay. You did exactly right in the common day when you're writing anything. You write all the errors, the misstrokes, the misspeaks with okay. the. Um, all right. Okay. Very good. Um, he's testing the theory developed by Florida State University psychology professor. Very good. Did everybody have to look that up to get the good print spelling? Mm -hmm. Good. And popularized. Let's talk about books. What do you do? Okay. Of course, you want to have a hyphen. Best hyphen selling book. It's not a best book. It's not a selling book. It's a best selling book. It's a combined adjective. And here's the name of the book. What is the rule on books? So, you can Google anything. You can Google titles, books. Um, but you, again, you want to find a good source. In our studies that we did for the written CSR, I can tell you that that is an exact question verbatim on what do you do with a book. Is it quoted? Is it in, 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 And um, so you want to get some... You want to get some good sources. Another good source, hey guys. So it's italicized, right? It's either italicized or underlined. Yeah. Okay, but you want to find the rule because, you know, it'll help you remember more. This is another good book. The Little Brown Compact Handbook. 
and it has a lot of details on it. Um, you will get a good reference started, and then you stick to it. Okay. This one says here, and uh, I'm sure Morrison's has something on books. Titles could be. See how it says right there, <coughs> undermining or italicized. So you make a choice. So in the written CSR test, if the question is, these are your four choices, and one's italicized and one's um, underlined, you can pick either one. And it would be correct because you have your resource. And if you miss the written CSR by one point, that's when you would come and, and, and contest it. And you have a resource. Okay, so that's what you do in underlying books. Um, this is another one that's interesting. Well, there's some exceptions here, but underline or italicize names of ships, aircraft, spacecraft, and trains. Written CSR study question right there. Okay? Underline or italicize. So you don't have quotes. I think the majority of students did a quote. But that's okay, that's how we learn. And guys, you know what? There's nothing wrong or right, but there is something wrong about the books because that's real. 101 elementary high school that you need to learn, even magazines, what would you do with magazines? Okay, um, that, okay, and then let's read how it, how it read. Best type in selling book, Outliners, is, Outliners, the story, so did I dictate anybody Outliners? Everybody? Yeah, you did say I that. I did, right? <laughs> when I was writing, it's Outliers, the story of success. You wouldn't really know about that colon in there unless you looked up what he did, okay? That comma on average, Remember, you don't need that. That 10,000 word numbers again. Hours of deliberate, comma efficient, deliberate efficient. Why would you have a comma there? Because it's two adjectives. Mm -hmm. Adjectives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you can substitute deliberate and efficient. Practice can produce international expertise. It feels like chess, dance. You can either or not have a comma there after one of our rules um, and again you want to find out what the rules are and then as far as um, frequency maybe it, it changes but I don't know I always like to put it because I always think of that story like the bar and grill thing because I think really that dance and swimming that would be like if there was you were dancing yeah. and swimming at the same time yeah. <laughs> Yes, and um, it's just a good, it, 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 but be consistent. It's easier for reading. Because we read that story to you guys about the other one, that the million dollar government problem, because they didn't have the comments in the right place. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the book that you had said that books are underlined, but that one is italicized. Underline or italicize. You can make your choice. You can do either or, either, but you just not quotes. <coughs> or books. Okay. Um, and if, guys, if you want to Google something called Chicago Manual Style, Chicago Manual Style, that's another one. You know how you studied in your English class and you used Greg's book? And you can get a free 30-day trial. So I went ahead and did that because I think we'll have four more weeks to go. So it's the uh, Chicago Manual of Style. And it's free for 30 days just to try it. And if you want to, I mean, you don't have to buy it. I'm just saying you want to have different sources. But again, remember, some of these sources are for editors of books. And you are right as a court reporter. So they try to go hand in hand, but not always. Um, Oh, but one thing I wanted to ask you. Look at what they're talking about here. We were hoping you'd get the gist of this um, whole concept of the of the article. And gist, does everybody know how to spell that? The gist of it? G or J? J. I don't know, you know, after you take a test, your mind is like, I, I'm telling you, how do you spell that? Just, is it not G? The gist of it? G is J? Yes? No, that's G. Okay. So what is it? <laughs> For the gist of it. G-I-S-T. 
Okay, good. I'm telling you guys, really, after a while, duh, it's like, how do you write that? You see this word so many times. Um, okay, so that average 10,000 10, hours of deliberate efficient practice can produce international experience in fields like chess, dance, and swimming, and court reporting. That's what we're going to get you to read this, because it has to do with how to help you. And let's go here. McLaughlin might be a case study for coaches, comma, teachers. You, you, again, you can do... Uh, or not a comma, and anyone interested in how to learn faster and remember better, there was a comma here. Maybe you don't need it, because his training routine incorporates interleaving. Interleaving, that's a pretty good word. Go ahead. I was wondering about the comma before because. See, because isn't it really supposed to be a semicolon before because? I thought that that was one of those words that was a semicolon. Yeah, I thought when you had because you didn't need a comma, but I don't really know what the rule is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This rule about the comma before, but look at the sense of it. Remember, there's that old rule that says for reading sense. McLaughlin might be a case study for coaches, teachers, and anyone interested in how to learn safe and remember better. Because this training routine incorporates interleaving. I can see where you don't need it because it makes sense on flowing. <laughs> and, and there is a rule about you because uh, I think sometimes some might have people, peoples, people, peoples, but the correct word was peoples. And that would have been my dictation error. Pupils often receive the message that here we had some that didn't hear the blocked. Blocked practice. Okay, and here, block practice, comma, or repeating a task over and over, because you have to have your commas because this is explaining what block practice is. It's not block practice or doing something else. And we have the same thing down here. Are y'all getting that? Because we have, I think, 75% of the class didn't have the commas here. Pupils often receive the message that block practice, comma, or repeating a task over and over, which is what blocked practice is, okay, will improve performance. And let me, before I get to this right here, I'm going to come down right here. York's hunch is that interleaving, comma, or mixing things up, see? Interleaving means mixing things up. It's the right way to train. Are y'all getting that? So you say you do need a comma? Yeah, you do need a comma because it's a, it's a, the phrase that's not needed. Otherwise, it sounds like you have two choices. You can either, you can either, his hunch is interleaving or his other hunch is mixing things up. But when you have the commas, it defines what interleaving is. And there's a specific rule on that, guys, that we, that we Going said. back to that because, Helen? Yes, ma'am. The rule says, when an adverbial clause is essential and follows the main clause, do not separate the adverb clause from the main clause with a comma. Yeah, and I just read that. The clause is necessary to the meaning of the sentence. Adverbs that frequently introduce these clauses are as, buzz, because, if, since, so, Good. and unless. Good. So you would not need it. So you would not Good. need that. Okay. Very good. Um, okay, so back here on block practice or repeating a task over and over, comma, will improve performance. There was no way for you to know how to do this, and everybody was very creative, okay? But we're going to read the whole sentence here, okay? Here they put, um, will improve performance, they put a colon. Some put a dash, maybe. But you see how it does not make sense the way you have it if you just keep it together? Mm -hmm. Pupils often receive the message that block practice or repeating a task over and over will improve performance, hit 100 drives. You have to do something there. Okay. They did a colon. I, I understood it to mean, and I, and I see what, you, what happened here, but I understood it to mean we'll improve one performance, two hit a hundred drives, three shoot. You know, so performance to me was one of the items okay. on the list. I can see that. But that, oh. but I understand where you were. That okay. Is, I think it sounds good. Okay. And so you would um, do a colon <coughs> or a dash here to make sense, and it's and it's a series. 
hit 100 drives. Remember, your numbers are numbers of over 10. Shoot 100 free throws, free throws, no hyphen. Unless it's like a free throw contest. Okay? Free throws, send a chapter, I'm sorry, read a chapter three times. Why wouldn't three be written in a number? I mean, I put, I didn't put it. But. I thought when there, was, when there was a sequence of numbers, over 10 and less than 10, they all should be the same. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, good point. I mean, 100, good. 100, 3, good point. But that just goes to show That's that That's when there's not, a sequence of numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he may not, this writer may not be following mm -hmm. how that particular rule is. Um, and, and, you know, I, but I, I think yeah, in, in your whole sentence, what they're talking about is when you have a sentence with a lot of numbers, and it's 7, 85, 10, uh -huh. 4, then you either you use all numbers. What do we call them kind of numbers? Digits. Digits. Ordinal. Ordinal. No. Ordinal, cardinal, or Arabic. Roman. Arabic, what are they? <laughs> okay. I'm not Roman. Numbers. <laughs> what are digits. they? Digits. The digits are the numbers. <laughs> and they can be the phalanges. The phalanges are fingers or digits too on the CSR written test. You got that. Okay, you got your mind going? You, you, you know what, guys? It's like, man, I studied that. I know it's somewhere. That's why we're asking you to get your reference book with your, and highlight whatever, because we, that number, whether it's ordinal, cardinal, comes out all the time. Helen, and with Maria and I had looked it up with the percentages. Mm -hmm. You know how you say you write the word percent out? Mm -hmm. But if it's a sequence of percentages, like the sentence has like 20%, 50%, you use the actual symbol. In court reporting? Yes. In Morton's? Yes. Okay. If it's a series of Good. percentages, but if it's a lump, then you spell it out. Good. And what about when you have it at the beginning of a sentence? Okay. The beginning of a sentence, you write it out. Right. And there was a rule. Except when it's like 34th Street, right? Because that's the actual number of the address. And you saw that rule somewhere. Okay, let's go back up to here real quick. Okay, colon, hit 100 drives, comma, shot 100 free throws, comma, read a chapter three times. Period. Period. But on the golf course, comma, you don't get 20 tries on the tee. 20 again over 10. It was also the way that you read that. Uh -huh. I was like, mm -hmm. uh -huh. you got to do something. <laughs> uh -huh. And, and you know what? Remember, your speaker is not going to make sense all the time. That's why what? You have to put periods. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I did, um, to keep on the, the I, I wrote out 100. I know I was wrong. Okay. Because and then I saw three times, and then so I just wanted to keep it all consistent. That's wrong. Well, that's what we were just well, talking about. When you have words together, yes. you can keep them, at, be consistent. Because you marked it, um, you put one thing, you told me to write it out, 100, I mean, the number, the number. Mm -hmm. um, and I did 100. I so mean, you did it to be yes. consistent with the three? Yeah. Of rule of thumb, thumb, do them easier for you. Be consistent with 10 and over. 10 and over. Uh -huh. That's probably the easiest thing, especially if you have a lot of numbers. Okay, so the but, so I'm not sure why. Was it because of my dictation that we didn't get the period there? No. But on the golf course, um, you don't get 20 tries. Your touch is that interleaving. Again, do you have your comma? Interleaving is the right way to train. Interleaving, comma, or mixing things up, comma. We just discussed this. Otherwise, it sounds like you have two, two options there. Is the right way to train. Um, comma, may, some people put period. It looks like it would make sense both ways. But let's read it. Your touch is that interleaving, comma, or mixing things up is the right way to train. So McLaughlin is continuously, sw continually switching. You see how it can keep going? Continue switching up clubs and alternating targets. As alluring, we have another word in there. You can start that new sentence, Helen, with so? Yeah, so, but, and. and that's an old rule of thumb where you couldn't, but you can. Um, what was it? We have another word in here. As alluring. Um, inuring. That's what I had. Uh huh. But you know what? If you look it up and you didn't know inuring, did you know this is a word? Inuring. Look it up real quick. E N U R I N G. Inuring. And the definition sounds like it would fit right in there as alluring. Is that what you did? That's what I did. You looked it up and saw it? Uh huh. Very good. But so, on a test it would be wrong, but in transcript 
Maybe somebody wouldn't remember, but that's what you caught. You have to go by what you have to go by what you wrote. There's no way they're gonna come back and say, I said a shuring and you wrote a yuri. No. Unless it's medical I'm like you were really <laughs> yeah, they'll come back they'll come back and correct it. Would you want them to? Okay, did y'all find it in urine? Just I just want you to find the know that there's another word there. The definition is similar. Um as alluring as the, I believe, I'm so proud of you guys, I think everybody got this. 10,000 hyphen rule, 10,000 hyphen hour rule. It's not a 10,000 rule, it's not an hour rule, it's a 10,000 hour rule. Has become, does anybody know what interleaving? Oh, we said what it is, okay. Has become the number of hours you might put in, not as important as what you do with it. Period. Bjork scans the other golfers on the range, pounding the ball, at, pounding ball at the ball and pitties. I when I was reading this, I just I had to look it up. What do they say, pitties? You know, because when I'm reading it, I couldn't tell. And it's pity, and I'm thinking, is it pity p i t t y? So it made me think a lot. But pity's p i t y. Uh, it might have just been me. Pities them. Okay, beginning of the sentence, that's when you have 95%. And there's a rule. The rule is there. Let's find it. In one of the things that we gave you. In numbers. Given you 13. I think I gave you this one. It's 13. Last week, maybe. Formatting for numbers and confusing words. And guys, you know, if you go on Amazon.com, you might be able to find these. Are, even though they're old books, it's still a good book, and you can update what you need. It's something. Something's better than nothing. Here we have. And it's the next page. And just so you know, make sure all your exhibits are numbers. Exhibit one, exhibit five, exhibit, they're always numbers. Even if it's one, two, three, four. Okay? And usually, and, uh, usually it's capitalized, exhibit. Um, here you go. Write percentages in figures except at the beginning of a sentence. That's the only rule I can find. I mean, it's probably in Morse's too, but 50% of the population is over it. So it's the beginning of a sentence. That's why it's 95%. And there is a rule on why um, you do the percent sign too. Okay. Studies show that interleaving works. Novice putters who mix, I think I left that out on some people, who mix practice businesses perform better on follow-up tests. Follow-up. You might as well find something and plug it into most frequently confused words and, and get it and, and figure out how you're going to do it. And it's, it's really easy, but it's probably the one of the, uh, it's really easy, but it's probably, it's just one of the most common error. Okay. Um, I think I went to grammar.com. There was my subscript. You, can, you guys have no idea how much preparation is. I mean, you want to find answers for y'all, but there's so many resources that we can use. Okay, so uh, I mean, I, I wasn't too real clear, and I'm sure it's in one of our books, but I think I went to grammar. I, all I did was Google it. What do you do? Follow up? Is it two words? Is it hyphenated? Is it one word? Follow up hyphen and follow up are different spellings of the same word. The hyphenated form is more common. Well, there you go, it's more common. That's one source that says it. But the unhyphenated word is gaining ground. We talked about 10 years ago, five years ago, maybe they didn't do it, but you're gonna go with the flow, so whatever is common. Um, in, in either form, it works only as a noun or an adjective. When you need a verb, make it two words. You will follow up tomorrow. 
you will follow up on your test tomorrow. Okay, so the noun, the follow up, your doctor's follow up, you will follow up with your doctor tomorrow. Two words. You're going to follow up with your doctor tomorrow. The follow up from your doctor was good. That's a noun, the follow up. So it could be hyphenated or one word. For example, you might email a colleague to follow up on an earlier exchange, and your colleague might respond to your follow up with a follow up question. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. You can kind of play with it, but find something and be consistent. If you have this throughout the transcript and it's wrong, your attorneys are going to notice it. Okay, and you want to, you want to, y'all are going to be so educated. You want to be the best court reporter. So don't assume it's, you know what, these, these people pay $4 a page, $3 a page for a reason. And that's why it's your job to do the best that you can on, on getting proper. Um, so anyway, that's. That's that one. Okay. Oh, this was fun right here. Okay, this is really fun. A hundred percent, unless this is totally wrong, but I went to the dictionary. College baseball players who hit 15 fastballs, one word, look it up. Look up fastballs, look up curveballs, and look up change-ups. Fastballs, curveballs, change-ups. Everybody was very, very creative. And we must just see if we can be consistent. And I believe you're gonna find they are all one word. Right? Good. And you would have a hyphen here because this is the end of your sentence. Hyphen here. And when you are transcribing as a court reporter, you want to remember the, the attorneys are paying you by the line. When they see big gaps, they're going to say, hey, you want them to call you back. You, you know, this little line is not going to make a difference in your pay, how much you're going to get, but you want the attorneys to call you back. So if you have the word, I think what one on one paper I might have wrote this one down here. If this didn't fit on your line, then you hyphenate it right there. Okay? You don't want to move way down here and leave a big space. Because what if you had that 500 times in a 500 page transcript, or a 100 page transcript? Okay, and back up a little bit to here. We're good on that, guys? Fastballs, curveballs, change-ups. Who would think you would need to look those up? There's, you know, curve. That's why reading, 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 whatever you can get your hands on. Um, variety helps not just modern learning. Semicolon. Why would you want a semicolon there? Semicolon. Let's look at um, page 135. I don't know if I gave you this or not. See if we can figure it out. Semicolons are kind of tricky. Well, it's two complete thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I think some people could put a period there. Yeah. But it just made a little more sense with the semicolon. Because they were referring to variety house. But let's look at some of the rules. Um, right here, she was a great she was great at customer service. Semicolon. We sent all the problems calls to her. As a result of that, that's what they did. In this example, the semicolon serves as a division for what some people <coughs> call a transitional expression. In other words, you might use therefore, thus, or so. Okay. While it is true that you can always use a period, if the conjunction omitted is a transitional expression, I recommend using the semicolon. Ease of reading again too. So if you could have put therefore, variety, variety helps not just motor learning, therefore, semicolon therefore, Bjork has shown in experiments, or, or thus, whatever. Anyway, it's no big deal if you put a period, it will still work for the reader, but this is you want to use semicolons sometimes. And you know, I can tell you that semicolons are not used a lot in court reporting. They're really not because it's your interpretation of when that semicolon should be there. Mm -hmm. But you want to know why you would use one. Of course you use one after, is that correct? Isn't that correct? Is that right? Um, experience interleaving that recall. Okay, two. Recall two. No comma. 
Some people can put the comma. I, 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 the way that I heard that, what I did for I shown in experiments, uh -huh. I, I'm just starting to paragraph. I took the period and I started to paragraph. I didn't even think of them as being connected. And it made sense, didn't it? No. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, it's, it's you're going to be your transcript. You're going to do fine. It's just if you have that throughout, then you want to make sure you uh, are just consistent. On your two, well, it just kind of piqued my curiosity. What do you do about the two? I, you always remember in the old days, it was always a comma before two. When using the word two, T-O-O, -O, you only need to use a comma before it for emphasis. I, too, like bananas. You can tell by the position of the two of two that emphasis is required in the sentence, so we use the commas to offset it. Mary wanted to go to the party two, so she shut down. Okay, let me just make sure this one. Um, Mike wanted to go to the party two, can you see it? Two, so he shut down his computer. I like bananas too. This sentence doesn't need a comma. Read this book, comma, and this one too. And I think it was because of just too many, too many commas, and it flowed there. So that comma at the end, find a good rule. You do not need it, or you do it. Just be consistent. I think the old rule of thumb was a comma was always there, but you can get away with that if it if it doesn't make sense. But do you see why? Just had so many comments there. I think the restrictive of positive was another one we talked about. Restrictive of positive, when you have your commas around it, if it can be removed from a sentence without obscuring the identity of the word, then you put your commas around it. We, that's a real common reason why we do commas.